Warning, the following podcast contains adult language and childish comedy. Listener discretion is advised. And now, please adjust your headphone volume to an unreasonable level and enjoy the most dynamic and electrifyingly entertaining podcast ever to conquer cyberspace. This is Mama's Baby Machines. Can you feel it? We are seconds away from this powerful episode to start. But before we do start, I want to tell you a couple things. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Amish B Machine. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. Go everywhere on the social medias. Look for us, AmishBabyMachine.com. Also, wherever you listen to us on this powerful podcast, whatever you use to listen, make sure you leave a review and leave a five-star review because that is the most powerful review, and it will unlock Secrets to the Universe. Also, merch. We have incredible, powerful merch we want you to check out, AmishBabyMachine.com. T-shirts, stickers, hoodies, we have it all. Powerful merch. Also, Patreon.com. Patreon.com is a great way to help support this podcast, and we have links on AmishBabyMachine.com. And now... Can you feel it? We're ready to go. Hold on. Here we go. Hello, friends, and welcome to the most powerful podcast ever created, the Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast, starring me, Dags. The Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast is powerful, and tonight we have a powerful guest host. All the way from the mean streets of Pittsburgh is Sean from the powerful Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast. Welcome, Sean. Thank you so much for having me, Dags. I appreciate your people meeting my riders requirements both the bra- all brown m&ms and the lukewarm soby life water was just fantastic there in the green room great job soby classic now what, <laughs> now what number are you up to now because you want to get to the tom hanks club uh this is number three this is number three for me so we're you know, we're, we're slowly getting there that's awesome awesome tonight hey. we have a powerful show We want to thank everyone that listens, all the new listeners, all the OGs, powerful pop culture topics. We got a bunch of food stuff. We got a bunch of uh, reboots, remakes, rehashes. Why is everything being redone, Sean? What's going on? What's your theory? Well, I I, I think it's a it's it's a twofold thing. I, I think number one, people are just lazy and don't want to come up with a good idea. But I also think two. The, the power of a known property tends to sell better than something that you don't know. Even if it is something that's just being completely rebooted and it's not what it was originally, just the power of that name um, is something that from a marketing standpoint, you just can't replace. Are you saying just like Disney taking classics and redoing them and just for the money or it's, they're not, they're not taking a risk, or what do you mean by that? Okay, well, I mean, Disney's a prime Disney's actually a great example because, like, you know, you, you look at these live action, quote unquote, remakes that they're doing, and it's just a way to take a property that they already own, that they've already made a ton of cash on, and find a new way to make a ton more cash off of it. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, it, it really is, hasn't failed yet. The Lion King made you know hundreds of millions of dollars aladdin did very well you know these these live action remakes that they're doing for whatever reason they're selling just based upon the nostalgia and and the name recognition like you know before anybody even saw a lick of footage from the lion king how many people were saying well i'll be the first in line to see it not me you know no not me neither but there there (laughs) are tons of people that i know you know yeah um I mean, you know, to me, I mean, we can talk about the the ripoff of Kimba the White Lion, uh, you know, all we want, but you know, it, it's from the Disney standpoint, it sells and it sold very well, and it made them more money for a property that they didn't have to reinvest in, in really. 
I don't know. I, I was thinking about that. The last predator I saw, I think that's where I reached a point where I'm like, I don't know if I can do it anymore. This predator is one of my favorite movies. I absolutely love it. But when I saw the last predator, it was horrible. And it reminds me of the last terminator I saw it was shit too. I mean, I, I, I think oh, yeah. I've reached a point where, you know, I always, I say that they force you to see it because you're so invested you know, in your life and, you know, in pop culture and everything, you know, you got to see the new Terminator movie, you got to see the Predator movie. But I'm reaching a point where I'm just like, let them die, dude. Well, I mean, we got another one coming out here in a couple of months. What is that? Uh, Terminator. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The last Terminator I saw sucked. And I don't know what they can do with it. Well, I, I think it's like one of those interesting things. Like, I, I will say this much: like, you, you talked about the Predator franchise, and yes, the last one that came out was 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 bad. Like, I I had high hopes for because Shane Black was involved with yes. it. He was involved with the original Predator movie. So yes. I had high hopes for it. Unfortunately, it didn't live up. But the movie before that, Predators, which was directed by Robert Rodriguez, that was a phenomenal movie. That was really well done. That was the one with uh, Adrian Brody and um, Topher Grace. Yeah, whatever happened to Adrian Brody after his Saturday Night Live fiasco, he kind of yeah, he, just I faded think he away. Independent, yeah, he does independent film, and you know he pops up every now and again. But yeah, he, he's pretty much faded. It, his star faded, but that Predator movie is really good. You like that you one, you know? And so, like, I do. I like it a lot. I know, I know a lot of people that do, um, but. Like the, the the Terminator franchise, like I had high hopes for the last one because I like the concept of kind of like rebooting the timeline and, and, you know, time is malleable. So, you know, you know, it, it, I, I like the concept that they came up with and the first half of that movie, I, I'm all in with, like, I, I really enjoyed the first half of that movie. It's the second half of that movie where it just it goes off the rails. I'm like, what the hell happened to this original great idea? You know, it, it, so I, it, I feel like like it's one of those things where like, especially with like the Terminator franchise and like Predator franchise, I feel like there's so much money that can be made, and the studios get nervous and they start interfering, and they start forcing rewrites and they start giving them notes and saying no we think this will work instead and we've done focus groups and you have to throw this in and i i think that's what kind of gets them off track with some of these movies and i'm hoping like i have low expectations for terminator dark fate but i'm still gonna pay my money to go see it and you know and i'm i'm hoping against hope that they finally give me something that lives up to the first two movies now, what would it take? How many bad movies before you said, fuck it, I'm not seeing any more of those? Like, no more Terminators. I think, I think this is going to be the last one. Like, I, the, the problem is, like, my, my, my girlfriend, Nancy, she, she loves these movies. Like, you know, she'll, the second she hears that, dun, 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 you know, she's like, oh, her ears perk up, you know? So, like, it, it's like one of those things where, like, she may end up dragging me to any further terminator film but i i think for me like this is the last one where i'm like okay i'm gonna give it one more shot just because I, I i believe in james cameron you know what does he has to have to do with it though he's just executive producer right he, he I, he's executive producer i think he oversaw a lot of the story aspects of it i think it was his idea to bring in tim miller who directed uh the first deadpool movie uh, as a director for this one, so I, I think I think Cameron had a lot of input into reshaping this franchise into hopefully something watchable. But he also gave a, a thumbs up to the last Terminator movie. But I think he was just paid to do that. Now, out of all the Terminator movies, your uh, lovely lady friend, what's her favorite? I think it's two. I'm I'm, I'm fairly certain it's two. Two is kind of cool. It it, it kind of reminds me of it's like Star Wars number two, Empire Strikes Back. Those yeah. those two sequels are are epic, and those you, when I think about those, I I I think out of all of them, Empire Strikes Back is my favorite, and Terminator T two. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they they're, they are one of the few exceptions um, where the sequel is superior to the original. Like I, I can say that I don't want to say you're right. Like in the Star Wars franchise, 
Empire Strikes Back is my favorite movie, uh, you know, hands down. It, it's it's a masterpiece. And the same thing with, with Terminator 2. I mean, you know, as much as I love the original movie, I think it's, you know, extremely well done for the time. I, T2 was just this epic that just melted your face as you watched the special effects back then and everything. And they and they still kind of hold up in a way. For for CGI at that time, you know, the, the liquid metal they do, still kind of yes. holds up. Yeah, the liquid metal has kind of like a stylized look that that is almost the way it, the effect is actually better than if they made it look more realistic. I think. Yeah, I agree. Like it, it actually does hold up. On, you know, even today, we're watching it. You're like, it doesn't look that bad. Well done. But wait, there's more, more powerful reboots. Let me check it out here on the powerful Amish chalkboard. It says here, Sylvester Stallone is getting ready to revisit two more of his iconic classics with Cobra Reboot and Tango and Cash, both being directed by Robert Rodriguez. I, I will say this much. I, uh, you know, I, I mentioned his name earlier. I am a huge fan of Robert Rodriguez. Like, I've even watched the Spy Kids movies. Like, you know, that they're, they're I, I, I like him as a director a lot. I think, you know, and as a writer as well. And I think if he's involved with a Cobra remake or sequel, even all these years later, I would probably tune in just because it's Robert Rodriguez. You know, I, I like Stallone. I'm a, I'm a Stallone fan, but having Robert Rodriguez involved in any project always is, will, will uh, catch my interest. Um, Tango and Cash, on the other hand, um, that is such a batshit crazy movie. God, isn't it great? The guy with the the guy with the powerful jaw. God, that was powerful. I thought oh, it was, yeah. I thought it was Jay Leno. It was so powerful. <laughs> it's, it's, but it, it's so. It's it, it's like the, it's like the over the top '80s action movie. Yes. On testosterone, like like it was like they injected it with extra testosterone. Yes, everyone was juiced and, up back and, then. It was the good old days. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, oh yeah. You did, everybody was roided up. But, I mean, it, it was so like, and, and the ending with like the that whole chase scene through the the junkyard <laughs> and the, the everything had like you know air to ground missiles and shit yes. attached to it. it like, oh, it, it was like just amazingly cheesy and bad but like i will watch it anytime that movie is on jack palance tango cash yeah, yeah. cash and tango <laughs> oh jack palance is great and just the chew and scenery like oh yes and just it's powerful because it's a team up i mean it's it's a team up the most powerful actors from the 80s god it's powerful and i like stallone because his whole thing you know he's wearing the suits and he's got the glasses on so oh yeah, he's got, he's got the fang, uh, the fancy uh, look going on. And what's cool about Stallone? He has so many different things. You know, he has the first blood character Rambo. He has the Rocky character. He has this character. He has uh, uh, Rhinestone. You know, all the greatest characters. Right, right, right. <laughs> Rhinestone. That's, that's, if we're talking about a movie that deserves a sequel, <laughs> that's it right there. Yeah, I I wonder if they can capture that 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 eightiesness though. I mean, if they get some music and, you know, I don't know, are they trying to, I don't know what the feel of the movie is, but if they, I think they could do it. What do you think? I I, I think if, if, if you're doing, if you're looking to parody the 80s, like that, the 80s style action movie, and you get like a Frank Stallone soundtrack involved with that. Oh my then, God. Then yes, I, I, I am all in. I am right there. Because the Expendables, um, a lot of people, a lot of younger people saw the Expendables and they didn't get it. You know, they didn't get the yeah. homage to it. And then, uh, you know, older 80s people were like, yes. But then the Expendables kind of petered out. I, the first one was the best. Yeah, that, that, that first one is an amazing movie. Like, it, it is so well done. Like, it's it shot. Like, I had low expectations for it, and when I saw it, I was shocked at how good it was. And then, like, you're right, like, two and three just, it starts becoming a little bit too over the top. But that first one was, like, just really well done. And, like, I, I you know, I can't talk enough about that one. I, that, that was a, a, a delight that uh, I was not expecting. Hey, Dolph Lundgren, that guy is epic, too. Universal Soldier. He-Man. Punisher. 
Yeah. Ivan Drago. Yeah. Yeah. The, the guy has been around. He, yeah, and I mean, he's just, all. he's, he's, he, and he's got the look, you know, he's big, he's powerful. It's, it's believable yeah. that he's, and he, he can pull off both the hero and the bad guy. Oh yeah. He's been doing it his whole career. And what do you think on Rambo? How's that going to be? I think, I actually think it's going to be a very good movie. Um, you know, the, the last John Rambo, the, the last one that they did a few years ago, that was a, a very well done movie. It was, um, I thought I thought that was going to be a fitting ending to like the that series. I thought that was just it it, it captured what you know the character was. It took you down that that beaten path again, but it did it in a totally different way. And then it gave you on top of all that some of the most messed up like just execution and murder scenes you've ever seen. Like that when that dude gets turned to pace at the fifty caliber machine, and I'm just like. That was amazing. Oh yeah, and I love when that uh, that bomb went off too. Oh yeah, I mean it just shook the whole movie theater. That's the thing, you know. You oh, see yeah. a lot of people see uh, they wait till stuff to come on TV, and it just doesn't have the impact. Like Jurassic Park, when the T Rex is roaring in the movie theater, like shaking the whole goddamn thing, you know. And then even at home, even oh, if yeah. you have a decent seventy inch screen or whatever, and some you know some surround sound subwoofer, you're never gonna approach that earth shattering scream of the t-rex it's the same as when that bomb went off in rambo i mean it's just the yeah, entire absolutely. freaking movie theater shook absolutely i agree with you like i i, I like i won't go see like a comedy in a movie theater because like I, I'm, I'm spending 10 bucks i'm not going to spend it on that you know most dramas i won't go see but like if it's a good action movie or you know something in like the, the superhero science fiction genre, like that's must see in a theater because you're right. Like the experience of having that, that, that surround sound, every, like everything that's involved with it, it being in the dark and screen, you know, it, it, it's, it's something you just don't, can't recreate at home, no matter how hard you try, in my opinion. Especially star Wars, you know, the opening scene of star Wars. Oh yeah. I mean, they have, you know, they have the powerful credits and then they always, you know, pan off to the side and then the battle starts. Or just, yeah. or just the epic battle scenes. You you just get that that scope and the cinematography, like Gladiator. I mean, you're not going to get that that feel yeah. at home. That no, epic battle. Like I don't care. I don't, yeah, I don't care how hard you try. It's it's, it's not, you just can't recreate that feel of being in a theater and having that wash over you like that. Now, I was talking about movies. Here, here's one that I wanted to bring up. Another '80s classic. I want to get your powerful thoughts on. The Princess Bride mm-hmm. reboot. Uh, no, this this is there are I, I was you know I I know you you've kind of taken a stance on a lot of things where you're like don't reboot it I want something original you know I, I I'm okay with some reboots there are some things I have to see rebooted The Princess Bride is not one of them This is one of those movies that is absolutely positively perfect as is and it should be one of those movies that that you show your children. And they appreciate it, and they show their children as is. You don't, you, you, you can't mess with this movie. It is one of those few movies that is just absolutely perfect as is, and it needs no, no remake, no reboot, no touch up, no nothing. It is it's a, it's a piece of art. You think about all the actors too. Like it, it's really tough to get that an ensemble of that many epic people. Like who did we have? We had Billy, yeah. Billy Crystal. You know, obviously, <laughs> people like Andre the Giant. You're not going to see that again. What's right. the, what's the inconceivable um, dude's name? Uh, Sean Wallace. Okay, you know you got him. Yeah, you yeah, got was... uh, Mandy Patinkin. Uh, who's the dude from uh, Spinal Tap? Chris. Uh, uh, um, we'll fill that in, but yeah. You know, I mean, you have so many epic people in there all at once. And yeah. and the feel of it, I mean, it's totally Monty Python humor, you know, rodents of unusual size. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, it was, the book was farcical. 
you know, if you, if you, I mean, the, they took a, they cut a lot out from the book. They just kind of focused on the, the main little story here, but like even the book itself was just an absolute farcical book. And I mean, this is kind of done it, but it does it so lovingly and, and it tells such a wonderful story, you know, and it, it's, I just don't see how you can recreate that. You're right. Like, I mean, the cast, when you look at this cast, you're right. Christopher Guest. Yeah, um, that's a Christopher was, Guest. Uh, the, the yeah, six, I was trying to he think was of the six-fingered yeah. man. Yep. Um, you know, Peter Falk was the grandfather. Oh, yeah. You know, Carol Kane was in that. Have yeah, fun storming the castle. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a... It's just a masterpiece of a movie that you. I, I just can't see how this can ever be. How how you how you could be so arrogant to think? Well, let's take this particular one and let's remake it because you know it's thirty years old. It needs redone. There are some things you just don't do. Yeah. Do you? What, what's the latest? Have you heard? I mean, they want to do it. They're going to do it. Where, what stage are they at? The, the, the only thing I've heard is that it was like one of those things where it's like, well, we're thinking about doing this. And I guess it kind of got leaked out and, you know, there's been a huge outcry from the internet. Like, no, you don't do this. What are you thinking? You know? So I, I, I'll be intrigued to see, you know, I, I don't see where that's going to, I, I can't see where it's going to be good. Like, they're going to go through with that. I just, I, I think it, it's like pulling on Superman's cape. You just don't do it. Yeah, I wonder if Meathead's going to be on board. Is does he have anything to do with it? Do you know or? No, I, I don't. I don't believe he's involved at all with with the with the, the trying to reboot that. No, because I mean, I think even he. I, I think he tweeted that he was against it. Oh, he did. Okay, Carrie Hughes. Yeah, I yeah, think, I saw I the Carrie Hughes. Hughes yeah. Did. Yep. Yeah. Um. Jamie Lee Curtis, who's married to Christopher Guest, yes. uh, tweeted that, you know, that shouldn't be done. So I mean, there, there was a lot of famous people outcry, like, you know, what are you thinking? No. And Spinal Tap is one of my favorite mockumentaries. I mean, that talk about Christopher Guest. That so. Was, yeah, that's so ahead of its time. And, like, all, all that stuff that those guys do, like the best in show and everything else, like, all those those – they're just phenomenal. So well done. Yeah. What, um, so how many, was there, I forget is, was there a remake to best in show? Was there two of them? No, not that I'm, I don't think so. No. Okay. I know the, the last, the last one that they did, that they released on Netflix was the one about the mascots. Okay. And, and that was the same, kind of uh, same cast of characters. Yeah. Like the same, yeah, the same cast of characters, a few new people, but yeah, it was like, you know, basically the same people they, they always come back with every every time and it, it wasn't it, it, it was i could see why it ended up going straight to netflix because it was it was funny but it wasn't as funny as a lot of the other stuff that that that, that ensemble had done in the years past you know it's horrible one of my uh everything <laughs> everything's my favorite oh, one of my favorites how many favorites do you have <laughs> but one <laughs> one classic 80s movie is obviously uh, Pee Wee Herman. Oh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Exactly. Yeah. So I actually watched the, did you watch the 4K remake they had, I don't know, a couple years ago? No, I didn't. Horrible. I don't know. It was so bad. It was like he couldn't even do his character anymore. And it, it's weird. Have you ever seen oh. like, uh, sometimes it's like Borat. Like I think when they haven't done the characters so long, they can't even remember how to do it. So he he oh, wasn't yeah, yeah. he wasn't even doing his Pee Wee correctly, and it was just a really weird. I mean that well that movie obviously had yeah. Tim Burton and it had you know, uh, Oingo Boingo soundtrack. Uh, yeah, Danny yeah. Elfman. Yeah, that I mean that was a class. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I mean again that's like one of those things where like especially now I mean that's so hard to like recapture that magic especially with these with like you know burton writing and directing that and elfman soundtrack and there are just certain things that when the pieces come together just right it is absolute magic speaking of that kiwi's big adventure was certainly one of them yeah speaking of that did you see dumbo i i the 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 live action remake correct i did not choose to see that no meaning you didn't want to 
Correct. Yes, I I, I chose because I I'm not a huge Disney fan to begin with. Like you know, the, 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 those classic Disney movies that everybody ooh, moves over. Like I, I like Bambi. Bambi was good, but like for the most part, like I, I like the original Dumbo. I didn't feel the need to go see the remake, even though it did have the great um, Michael Keaton in it. I, I chose to sit at that. I wonder, do you wonder if Walt Disney was around, he would like the direction that Disney's going? I, I, I don't know if he'd like the direction of the evil empire that they've become. Because like, if you look around, like, and they own so much, and you look at like the mo- at the you know movies, and you know, in the top ten, I think six of them were Disney movies so far this year, and Star Wars hasn't even come out yet. Um, I, I think the, the 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 what's become the Disney Empire, I don't think Walt would appreciate, but I think like the direction that the the industry is gone, like as far as like with what Pixar has done, what Disney Animation has done. Stuff like that, I, I think he would be on board with. I think that, like the live action remakes, I think like he could see that, like, okay, yeah, we're just taking a property we're already on, we're squeezing more money out of it. That makes sense. But I think everything else, I think Walt would have been. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I just don't know if he'd be okay with like the empire that Disney has become. Now, I wonder about the Joker movie. Now, we're all predicting it's going to be a popular movie, correct? That's what all the critics are talking about? Right, yeah. So if it's going to be a popular movie, it's going to make some money, right? So I'm wondering yes. w- what Disney is going to think about that. Are they going to try to capture that? It's, it's just something I was thinking about. Are they? You know how whenever something comes out and it's hot, whether it's a song, a band, fashion, everyone wants to copy that, emulate it. So I wonder how many people are going to tr- try to come out with Joker-type movies. A la Marvel. I, I don't. I'll be honest. I think Marvel has a a tried and true formula that they want to stick with. I I don't see them ever. Well, no, I, wouldn't, I shouldn't say ever, but I just I don't see them changing the, for a flavor of the month. Like I, I think they're going to look at Joker and say, "Hey, well done, good job. You figured something out." And we're just going to keep doing what we do because it makes a billion dollars every time. I, I think that's going to be their 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 mindset. I, I just I don't see them overreacting to a Joker movie doing well, um, especially when they you know if they really want to go that route, they have better options with a, a Deadpool movie or like doing something on the lines of Logan again because now they have all that cachet with the properties. Do you think they could do a Logan type movie and pull it off? I I think if they set their mind to it, they could. Like it, it. I think the the difficulty is, you know, and I think this is where the difficulty with with Deadpool comes in. You know, they want this all to be so interconnected. You know, they want all these properties to be all under one big tent. That I think it would be difficult for them to go the full r like they like they like fox did with logan oh you never want to go full r no you never want to go full r uh, never but <laughs> but at the same time i i feel like it, it they have that club in their bag if they absolutely ever need to go to it i'm just kind of od'd on comic book movies and i think the joker is one that I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt because from the trailers and trailers can be deceiving, but it looks cool. It, it it looks like a, it looks like a very well done comic book version of a Scorsese movie. Yes. Taxi driver. And, uh, or, or I, I'm leaning more towards like King of comedy. King of comedy. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, it looks like they, they really went out of their way to do an homage to Scorsese movies, and they thought, well, the best way to do that under the Warner Brothers banner would be just to use this Joker character who is so flexible in what we can do with it. Um, I think it's going to be a great movie. I, I honestly do. I, I think I think it's probably going to be that movie 
that at comic book movie that's up for a best picture award. But I'll be honest, it's not the comic movie I want to see. So it's, I, I'm not going to go see it just because I, 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 I don't like that style of movie. I'm not a fan of Scorsese's movies. I'm not a fan of mob movies. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, stop, stop. What did you say? You're not a fan of mob movies? I'm not. Tell me. Tell me about it. I'm just, okay. Like, I I will tell you right now that I absolutely positively agree that Godfather 1 and Godfather 2 are two of the greatest movies that have ever been made. Okay? I cannot deny that for a second. I just don't like them. Like, they're not my cup of tea. Like, I, I, I don't have anybody that I can root for, in my opinion. Like, I, they're, they're, they're masterpieces of movies, and, and I'm not going to deny that for a second. But they're just not something that I find entertaining. So, good fellas, You didn't like Joe Pesci? It's a phenomenal movie. I, I'm not going to say I wasn't entertained by it, but at the same time, it's not a movie. I, I've seen it twice in my life, and I don't. I don't, I, if I ever see it again, it doesn't bother me. Did you see Goodfellas 2, Casino? I did see Casino, yes. I've seen Casino. <laughs> again, it, it's, not a, it, it's not a bad movie, but it, it just, it, it's like, at the end of the day, like I, I was like, okay, that's a good movie. I can't deny that, but it didn't entertain me the way another movie would. Now, let me ask you this. What mob movie... Do you enjoy what was your favorite other than the ones you just mentioned you just don't um, like the genre or what johnny dangerously is a great movie whoa <laughs> <laughs> pour out the old michael keaton club there um no, I'm, I'm just i'm not i'm on, in all honesty i'm i'm not that big of a fan of of the genre at, at all. I mean, I, again, like I, I'm not going to deny like those movies are great movies. I, I'm not that guy who's going to be like, if I don't like it, it can't be good. I, I I can appreciate art for what it is, and and they and they the, all the movies we talked about, they're all art. But at the same time, like I I just it's just not entertaining for me. Is it the New York vibe? I mean, you don't like the urban city vibe? Do you think it is, or is it the crime? Or you hate Italians, or what is it? I, I think it's just it's the fact that in those movies, like I, I, I'm very much, I guess the way I, you know, I was brought up because my dad would make me watch cowboy movies, and it was like, you know, there was a good guy and a bad guy, or you rooted for the good guy, you know, you, you know, you, the villain was somebody that was the villain, you know, and you know, you love him or hate him, and like in like mob movies, like it never feels like there's any ever anybody that's like really the good guy. Like e- e- even like the, the, the quote unquote, like the, the, the hero of the movie per se is, is still a scumbag <laughs> at the end of the day. You know, it's, you know, it's, I, that they're all criminals at the end of the day, even though like, you know, one criminal may be better than the other for whatever reason. It, it, it's still, you know, the, the you know, I, I need somebody I can I can root for and pull for, and you never get that from those types of movies. How about Kevin Costner in The Untouchables? Well, that's a great movie because you have Kevin Costner to root for. Powerful. Yeah, you're, you've got Elliot Ness. You've got Elliot Ness right there. You know, and so you have, and plus you got the great Sean Connery. You know, you know the they bring a knife, we bring a gun. You know, I, I, that's that's good stuff right there. So you you do, and that is I do like that movie a lot. Because it's not really a mob movie as much as it is a a cops versus robbers type of movie, and so now I have Elliot Ness as you know the hero to root for. Interesting, I, I get your point. I I love Untouchable. I like all of them. I like I like mm-hmm. I like the gangsters, and I do like I I do see what you're saying about you want the hero to win. I think for me, it's like horror movies. When if I see a horror movie in the and the bad guy wins in the end, then it kind of freaks me out. So yeah. I can I can handle a horror movie if the if a good guy wins, but if it add, uh, ends with the the bad guys winning, then then it's a little not as good. So I kind of I kind of see your uh, powerful point, but Untouchables is great. You know what was on TV? I just flipped over, and it's still hold, held up to me as RoboCop. Oh, the the original RoboCop. Yes. 
Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm right with you. Okay, that, that was um, I think I was Stan Winston, you know, one of his creations for that that RoboCop suit, and uh, it's a fun little story. And yeah, I like the sense of humor. I like the sense of humor. I like how it's science fiction, but it's you know dirty science fiction. You know, it's just a cool movie. Ronnie Cox. It was, yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 you know, a great little line that, you know, I'll buy that for a dollar. I still use that to this day. Oh, yeah, that's classic. Well, that's yeah. a, that's a beauty of 80s movies because they always had the great 80s movie had a great one line, you know, you are the disease and Absolutely. I'm the cure. Yeah. But I saw that, and a lot of times you, you see a show, like, it, like, you see a show that you love when you're a kid and you watch and it doesn't hold up. Like, a prime example is Uncle Buck. I love that, and then I just watched it recently, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> And I love John Candy too. What's a movie? You yeah. can, what's a movie you can think of that that just didn't hold up once you re saw it? I'm trying, I'm trying to think of what I've watched recently from from the past. Um, well, while you're thinking, speaking of the past, another powerful reboot is Battlestar Galactica. And I know you're, big, oh, I know you're a big sci-fi guy. So, what's your feelings on that? It, 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 it's full disclosure. The reboot of Battlestar Galactica that they did in the 2000s is quite possibly the best television show that's ever been made. Whoa. Now, why it's is a that? a powerful statement, I know. I, I, I think when they, when they, when they announced that the, the Sci-Fi Channel was doing this, I was immediately against it. And then when they announced that Starbuck was going to be played by a woman, I was even more against it. I was like, how do you do this? How, how do you how do you reboot this amazing show from so long ago? And how do you you take the main character who who was like this 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 drinking hard drinking hard living cigar smoking son of a bitch? And you're gonna turn him into a girl? How do you? And then I watched, you know, the miniseries with with all intents of hating this show, just. Burying this show to all my friends, like, oh, it was awful. I can't believe they did this. And, and at the end of it, I was mesmerized by how good it was. That it was just so well done. And it was a show that over its its run, it it delved into our our psyche after 9-11 as a country. It delved into religion and politics and the intertwining of, of, of those in a society. And I, it it was um, it's a, it's a and I've been saying this a lot, but it is a masterpiece of a show. That if you have not seen it, I highly recommend you take the time to sit down and watch the entire series because it is masterfully done, and the the cast is brilliant, and it's it was just so well done. It, 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 I I I can't give it enough credit for being one of the best shows I've ever watched. Now, how many episodes were there on the reboot? Um, there weren't that many. I I, I want to say it, it maybe hit eighty or ninety episodes, but let me just double check here real quick. I, I think it only ran for five or six seasons. So the original went from uh, nineteen seventy eight to seventy nine, and then right, one, yeah, the, the one you're talking about came out like two thousand three. Um, and then they yeah, had two thousand. It ran from two. It ran from 2004 to 2009, and it's 73 episodes. Okay. So they had a mini series in 2003 then? Yeah, it was, it was yeah, it was like a, in, when the first, like they launched it as a mini series, like a, you know, two, two, two hour movies, which came out to, you know, after commercials, about a, a three hour long movie. And then um, that kind of put the series in motion. And then the next, the next year they started with the series and that ran for, I think the first season was like 10 episodes. So it's not based on the 78 original. So in a nutshell, what, what is the new show about? Okay. Well, it is kind of based on it a little bit. Um, it, 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 the, the concept is the same, you know, that there's, um, it's a little bit different. Like there's, been, there's already been a war with Cylons and it was a peace agreement a long time ago. And, now the Cylons have evolved and they've changed and now they're coming back and they're attacking the colonies, uh, you know, the, the 13 colonies of, uh, you know, of our heroes. And then, you know, the Galactica 
is the only ship that survives and they find some other stragglers and they, they're making their way to Earth. So the basic concept is the same, but um, they change up a lot of the the, 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 the the characters. Like, you know, Commander Adama is still there, but now he's played by the great James Edward Almos. Um, uh, you know, his son, you know, Apollo, that's his call sign. His real name's Lee. So, you know, it's, but, um, you know, the, the, the concept of, you know, the, the 13 colonies were founded uh, you know, a millennia ago by people who left another planet and came and found these. So it, it's, it, it's really well done. It, again, it, 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 it weaves in the, the religion of, of these colonies along with the politics that have to come, come up now. And it, it, it's, you know, meanwhile, they're all trying to find their way to earth while they're being chased by the Cylons the entire time. And the Cylons now we find out some of them look human. So it, it's it's an even bigger twist at the end, and it's it's just very well done. And again, it's it's something I would highly recommend if you haven't seen it. it it's it's amazing, and, and you know the finale is very controversial. There are some people who love it, some people who hate it. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was really well done, and I thought it tied up everything in a very satisfactory way. Yeah, I'm going to check it out because. I have just broken memories of the original Lauren Green. We all love him. That's all I can think of. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, and then it gets yeah. then it gets all mixed up with Buck Rogers. So we all we yeah. all loved Wilma. So I will. Uh, <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> biggie, biggie, biggie. What's up, Buck? I, <laughs> Doctor Theopolis. <laughs> see, see, Twiggy was the robot, but Doctor Theopolis was the Simon Says hanging around his neck. Wonderful, was, yeah. powerful. The original Battlestar Galactica, it had some interesting concepts. I mean, it suffers because it's you're trying to do a science fiction show in 1978, and you know, like a lot of times you can tell, like the special effects are like projection on a wall behind somebody. You know, there's um, it, it's it was ahead of its time as far as like what the story it was trying to tell. It just didn't tell it very well. Um, but the 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 remake that they in 2004, if you have not seen it, I I can't recommend it enough. Take the time to give it a watch; it is well worth the time, and I, you'll you'll highly enjoy it. Now we had a powerful show tonight. I just want to end it on a, on an up note. Powerful okay. news coming out: KFC is testing chicken and donut sandwich, and Pittsburgh is the test market. Oh my God. Here's a little story about it. It says, in case you missed it, America has been kind of obsessed with chicken sandwiches lately. A KFC's iteration may be taking it a bit too far or maybe not. KFC announced it will be testing a new combination of fried chicken and glazed donuts be- beginning September 16th on a move that is either genius or insane. So what are your thoughts on the powerful donut chicken sandwich? I I am intrigued by this. Um... I have had a sandwich where the the donut was the bread. It was a you know it was a a cheeseburger with a donut as the bread. That was that was very good. I mean it's it's a, you know if you like that combination of sweet and savory, clearly this is going to appeal to you. Um, I, I think like a, a good KFC crisp chicken breast with um you know a glazed donut. I, I, it has an opportunity to, to be good. Um, so I'm intrigued by it. And I, I will probably give it a try. I love it though. Speaking of ro- uh, ro- remembering back to RoboCop, it's almost so obscene. It's almost like a joke. Like we just reached a point where, like, oh fuck, we'll just take fried chicken and put donuts. In it. It's like we reached a point where maybe, maybe an asteroid should hit the Earth and we'll just restart. It's pretty funny. I did have, I did have, I did have donuts with bacon on it. Yeah, and that's I, pretty it is, good. You're right. It is like we, we you know, we we talk about like. You know, we we have this whole thing with Bill Maher and James Corden talking about fat shaming and stuff, and then here comes KFC rolling out the, uh, the 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 chicken donut sandwich, and you're just like, yeah, there's why we have an obesity problem. <laughs> well, thank you, Sean, for your powerful insights tonight on this powerful episode. Tell the kids where they can enjoy your podcast. Well, um, the Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast. We're very easy to find. Uh, we're on most podcatchers, uh, Apple. Uh, podcast, um, 
Stitcher, Spreaker, you know, Podcoin, and so it's that I'm sure. Um, so just search Pittsburgh Nerd on your your favorite podcatcher, and you should be able to find us pretty easily. You can also oh. find us on Facebook and Twitter. Powerful. Just search Pittsburgh Nerd. All right, friends. We hope you enjoyed this powerful episode. And until next time, you've just enjoyed the Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Amish Baby Machine Pop Culture Podcast. It is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and everywhere else fine podcasts are found. Please support our podcast through Patreon and shop our merch at AmishBabyMachine.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. This has been an Amish Baby Machine production.